Good morning everyone, Janie here and welcome back to my garden. So it is the end of May right now and it is time for my backyard garden tour just to update all of you and myself on how my backyard is doing. And I have to say I've put a lot of work into my backyard this month and it has paid off. We live in Northern California zone 9b and it gets really really warm here, really hot and we love using our backyard as kind of an extension of our house. We live in California and so the California real estate, we can't afford a very large house. So we like to use every square inch we possibly can. And that includes our backyard patio space. And since we have kind of fixed it up for the summer, we have been out here every single day. We have barbecued almost every single day, hanging out here, uh, we've been swimming, it's been wonderful. So probably the biggest change other than setting up the patio and all that kind of stuff, the biggest change this month is what you see right behind me and that is my annuals. I finally got my annuals in this month and in just one month, they look gorgeous. They look so fantastic. I'm so proud of them. I'm so happy with them and I can't wait to show you all. So let's get started. So to start off with, I wanna show you guys my three white pots. These are three giant pots that were left here when we purchased the house. And they were kind of like a blue, a dusty blue color and I painted them white. And I was telling you all last month that every year I've lived here, I've planted these up with kind of different things, just basically whatever I found at the plant store and then I threw it in. So none of, they've never matched, not this year. This year I was determined, I wanted to have them match and I am so so glad I did. I think they look absolutely gorgeous and I find myself coming out here all the time just so I can look at them and look at how happy and cheerful they are. So to start off, this was this is Barbara Karst Bougainvillea growing up my wall. It is actually growing up wires um, on this trellis. So it's not actually attached to the wall other than where the wires are attached uh, with the eye hooks right there. Um, and it's doing really well and I'm fertilizing it every month with a uh, palm and hibiscus fertilizer and I'm really happy with that. So in the pots, these uh, plants are all from Proven Winners. They're Proven Winners annuals and they were provided to me uh, by Proven Winners so that I could try them out in my zone 9b climate. Um, and so the first one I have in the back is the Suncredible Yellow Sunflower. And I actually tried these out last year and so I kind of cheated. I knew that they would work really well here, but I just think they're so beautiful and they're so beautiful. Uh, uh, right up next to the Barbara Karst Bougainvillea. Underneath that, we have the Augusta Lavender Heliotrope, which I absolutely am in love with this year. I think it's so cheerful, it's so wonderful. I think it smells gorgeous and I love it. And then I like to call this the star of the show. This is Supertunia Mini Vista Pink Star. It has gone crazy. It is ridiculous. I'm telling you guys, I planted these plants just a couple days over a month ago, and you can see these pots are totally, totally full. So I'm so excited about these pots. I think they're just gonna get more and more full. I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to see the white pots by the end of the season because the pink star is gonna probably cascade over it, which I love that look as well. So I'm super excited about it. You can see they are all looking good right at the base of the pots you probably well let's see i guess they're no they're not quite open yet i'll put in a screenshot of them being totally open um but this is the evolvulus blew my mind xl and i planted these they are a heat tolerant plant they're a dwarf morning glory they're not like regular morning glory that's invasive it's a different type of morning glory but i planted one on either side of the pots with the idea that it's going to kind of spread out um, and one of the fun things about these plants is that they close at night and then they pop open in the morning. I will link a video up above where I um, did a like a time lapse of it in the morning and it was so, so cool. So those are new, you know, kind of newish, only a couple weeks old and they should get a lot bigger. And these actually are going to be perennials in my zone. Um, they're technically proven winners annuals, but they're, they will last in my zone. So I'm super excited about that. All right, so moving on, 
Here are my tiny tomatoes that are doing fantastic, but I'm having a couple problems with them. Um, first one up here is ink spot. A couple weeks ago, I mean, like two weeks ago, it was like up to here. It was fantastic. It was beautiful. And then we had a windstorm. I did not stake any of these um, dwarf uh micro dwarf tomatoes. They're all, these varieties of tomatoes are going to stay this big. I don't need to pop them up, pot them up. They, they're not going to get much bigger than this. However, I do think I needed to stake them, at least some of them. Some of them are getting really big. This one right here, when it bonsai, um, if it wasn't leaning against this little, uh, shelf right here, it would probably fall over. Um, but I'm just not totally sure what to stake them with. I guess I could put bamboo stakes all around and kind of tie them but they're just there's so much fruit on these tiny little plants they're having a hard time uh handling all of it so i got one this is microtina i got one ripe tomato so far off of microtina and then you can see how much fruit is coming on all the rest of them so i'm really excited to try that and i think the only thing i would say about these is i think that they need to be staked somehow some of them need to be staked obviously like micro tom this is one that's only going to get three inches tall so that's about it. That's why it's kind of sitting in this, this location. You can see it's starting to ripen back there. So obviously I don't need to stake that one, but ink spot, this one, bonsai, those guys I think need to be staked. All right, and now onto my veggie garden. So this is the first veggie garden that I've done. Um, I like to call this my kitchen garden because that door right there goes into our dining room and our kitchen. And then this is the table that we eat at almost every single day now when the weather is nice. Um, so it is a keyhole garden and I did the wattle fence around it as kind of just like a divider. Um, the, they are doing so well. <laughs> I am so happy with everything that is growing right now. I, I mean, of course, the zucchini, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I have some zucchini that I have to harvest right after I finish filming this. Um, I have some pesto besto basil right there. I have some crookneck squash that's doing fantastic. Here are my muncher cucumbers that I am training up this uh, string trellis, which I've actually never done before either, and I'm loving it. I have been training off the little... Um, what do you call it? Like trailers, just to just to keep everything growing up the string and they are just loving their life. And I actually have one fruit coming right now. Look at that cute guy right there. <laughs> so I am really liking this little trellising system. It's so fantastic. I would totally recommend it because I think it saves a lot of space. So if you don't have a lot of space, like I don't have a lot of space, you know, trying to train things up, I think is really, really important just to, just to maximize what you can put in your small garden. Um, and I think it looks really pretty. I think it looks good. So over here, I have three different kinds of tomatoes um, on these uh, garden to tours. And yes, those are not kosher <laughs> tomato cages, but they're so pretty and I wanted to use them. And it's, you know, this is such a prominent area. I didn't want the regular tomato cages. Now I'm kind of thinking like, maybe that wasn't the right choice, but it's too late now. I've got them in. So this big one over here is the Bellini tomato. That is an indeterminate. It's going to get nice and big. This one is a garden gem. These are, these three are from Proven Winners. And then this one is actually not going to get that big. It's the Good Hearted Tomato. So this is looking really good, nice and lush. I am fertilizing this uh, once a week with fish and seaweed fertilizer, and I think it is loving its life here. Oh, and then one more thing I wanted to point out in the kitchen garden is the purple hyacinth bean. I love this. I grew it from seed. It is so easy to grow from seed. Here's the little seed pods. They are so pretty and it just grows so fast. Now that it's hot, it's going to start growing up this pergola uh, post right here. You can see I've got a little bit of twine for it to grow up um, and it's just going crazy and I'm super excited about it. And then funny enough, I did have a volunteer purple hyacinth bean right over there, right in the absolute perfect spot and it's growing nice and big and I actually have to put up some twine for this one as well 
because this guy is getting, look at that. That is a volunteer <laughs> that doesn't even have any drip to it. So fantastic. And I think it'll be really pretty on this post, on both posts, and I'll kind of frame the kitchen garden. So swinging around from the kitchen garden, we come to our eating area and our patio area. And this is probably the area we spend the most time these days, which is so, so wonderful. Like I said, it's, we use it as an extension of our house and we absolutely love it. So this past month, I kind of uh, added the two new rugs, kind of set everything up, set everything up for the season. And I'm so, so glad we did that. Um, this table is just an old table that we used to have in side when we lived at our old house. Um, so it is not meant to be an outdoor table. Um, you can see it's kind of wearing off a little bit, you know, like getting a little bit damaged, but we're going to use it. Um, I do think I might seal it with something, but I'm not sure what I want to do yet. I have to kind of look into it for what would be the right thing. Over here is our backyard patio area. And again, we are absolutely loving it. Um, we got this hammock swing, which we've been using all the time. The girls are always in it, reading their books in it. It's very, very cute. The one drawback, the one mistake, I don't want to call it a mistake. The hard thing that I had with this patio makeover was we normally keep a fire pit right here and we like to sit around the fire pit in the evenings. However, it is a regular wood burning fire pit. It's way over there right now. And when I got these rugs, I didn't really pay attention. I'm glad I checked, but they're actually flammable. So I didn't want the fire pit right on the rugs. I just, you know, not safe, all that kind of stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Um, and so, so we were, I was kind of disappointed about that because we actually really do like to sit around the fire pit. Um, so my, uh, when I had that patio makeover video out, a lot of you all gave me really good recommendations. And I think the one that I'm going to look into is the, um, there's like a, pat a fire pit table, uh, patio table. And I think that it'll be high enough away to keep the heat away from the rug. And I think that we're going to probably invest in one of those, you know, once we budget it in and everything. So that is something that we will kind of work towards um, and and be able to look forward to to have in our backyard out in this little patio area. Area. So probably the star of the show of this patio area is my, are my pots, I would say. So all of these pots are from Proven Winners. Sorry about my shadow. They're all from Proven Winners. They're Proven Winners annuals. And I decided to do Proven Winners recipes this year. And actually last year I did have one recipe. Um, I'll put the name of it. It was, it's, it's, I feel like it's the most common recipe because it uses the Supertunia Vista bubblegum. Um, beautiful, gorgeous. It, I'll see if I can find a picture right now and put it on. Um, absolutely gorgeous. So I was excited to try more recipes this year from Proven Winners. The first one and probably my favorite one is the lemonade stand recipe. And I don't, I'm not usually drawn towards yellow, but this year, oh my goodness, I am so happy with this. And I'm so glad that I chose to do this because it is just this beautiful, a uh, pop of cheerfulness <laughs> when you look outside. And it's kind of the most prominent position in my backyard. So I'm excited that I did that. Um, it includes uh, uh, Supertunia Limoncello, which is just gorgeous. It is so beautiful. I did put limoncello in my landscape in the ground last year, and it did not do as well as this. So limoncello is super happy in pots. Then we have Super Bell's yellow that is doing so well as, as well. And then we have the luscious citron lantana, which I am absolutely loving this color. It's kind of a mix of the limoncello and the Super Bell's yellow. So such a happy, cheerful pot that I'm so excited about. Over here is kind of a mono pot. This is a uh, Sunstar Pink Pentis. So beautiful. And I didn't know that these blooms close up at night and then pop open in the morning. So it's kind of like the morning glory. And I just love that. It's so cute. Um, so this guy has been going crazy. It's got buds all over it. And I don't have to worry about deadheading it. And it's actually a really good, um, or it, it says that it's supposed to be a really good alternative to hydrangeas in hot climates. So I'm excited to see how this guy does as the season goes on. Again, it's only, it's only been in here for a month, so I'm excited to see how it's doing. 
And then uh, this one right here is the fancy footwork recipe. Um, and this one has Safari Sky James Britannia, which is a new flower to me. It seems to me very similar to a Bacopa. And Bacopas, they don't do very well in our heat. Um, it, they kind of fizzle out as it gets hot. But this James Britannia is like the hotter it is, the happier it is. <laughs> it's an African native. So that kind of makes sense that it likes the heat. Uh, but if you look at the color up close, it is seriously like a safari sky. I think the name is absolutely perfect for that one. And then right behind that is Unplugged Pink Salvia. And I cannot tell you guys, they're not here because I've obviously scared them away, but literally 100% of the time during the day, there are pollinators on this plant. They're all over it. They are, they are so attracted to this plant. I cannot believe it. It is shocking to me how much the bees and the butterflies love this plant. It's great. All right, and then moving over to this other side, this big pot here is a match to the other one over there. It's another fancy footwork with the Safari Sky James Britannia and the Unplugged Pink uh, Salvia. Down here, this recipe is called Vintage Wine Basket. And probably the star of this show is this High Noon Uriops, which is a bush daisy related to a sunflower. And it's just so happy and cheerful and more of that happy yellow. We have Violet Ice Superbina, and then my Super Tunia Bordeaux is just starting to bloom. I have another one over here that's start, that's going to start blooming as well. So this guy's kind of filling in still. Um, again, it's still the first month, but it's looking good. This one right here is not a recipe. This is just some extra Super Tunia Vista Royal Velvet that I had um, and then Chocolate Drop Coleus, but <laughs> it's, it's very happy here. It's filling out, and I think that this cute little pot is going to be covered by this guy pretty, pretty soon. Right behind there, I have my Purple Queen Bougainvillea. It's not looking very happy right now. I think I might have overwatered it, but I'm not sure. I have my Improved Meyer Lemon, and then right here, this deadness <laughs> is my uh, sweet peas. It is my Mammoth Choice Mix sweet peas. I let them die because I'm going to start harvesting uh, all the seed pods so I can keep some seeds for next year. So this will be coming out this month, and then I'll find something else to put in there. Probably one of these things that I have over here. Um, one of the best things that I did this month is I cleaned out my greenhouse. Woohoo! <laughs> so we went on vacation this month and I knew that it was going to be super, super hot and I could not leave anything in the, in the greenhouse. So I busted my you know what <laughs> and got all the plants that I had in here planted and I'm really glad that I, that I got that push to get it all done because I'm really happy to have this all cleaned out. The only thing I do have left in here are my caladiums. Um, so these are all my caladiums from Proven Winners, the heart to heart. This one is lemon blush. You can see it is starting to grow. This one is snowdrift. I think this one is another snowdrift. I only labeled two of them and then I got, I was just trying to plant them quickly and so it will be a surprise um, which ones come out. I only have two varieties. I have lemon blush and I have snowdrift. So I'm really excited to use these. These are heart-to-heart -heart, uh, caladiums, and so they can actually handle sun, which is huge, right? Um, so very exciting, and I am planning to use a lot of these in my cut flower arrangements. I had no idea that you could use caladium leaves as kind of like foliage, the foliage in your cut flowers. So I'm really excited. I have all of these right here, um, and they're they're the jumbo caladiums from Proven Winners. So I think that they should get pretty big. So I. I've left these in here because these are super tropical plants and they like the heat and I think that they'll be really happy uh, staying in here. So because my greenhouse is all empty right now, this is our new friend, <laughs> the sloth. <laughs> he hangs out with us. Um, because my greenhouse is so empty, it's taking up a lot of space. And I really like having the greenhouse here. I think it's a great spot. But you can look over here. I have a lot of extra space that I kind of, I scooted it over so it can get as much sun as possible. But what I'm thinking, I'm thinking for the, the summer season when I'm really not using my greenhouse that much. I do have a shade that I can put over my greenhouse, but it just gets so hot here. It's usually around 100 degrees during the summer here during the day. So it's just too hot to have anything in the greenhouse. I'm thinking about pushing the greenhouse over because it's not bolted down, pushing it over and then putting some raised beds right here. 
right here on this side. One, I think that that will be gorgeous because I think it'll be pretty to have some greenery growing right here. And two, this is really good sun. This is a full sun spot. And so I kind of want to use it, right? So that's what I think I'm going to be working on this month is just using this area. And, and maybe that'll be my plan is that, uh, during the summers, I just push my greenhouse over to that side. And then I use this area for more growing, growing in pots and growing in raised beds and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited about that. And I have to kind of figure out how I want to handle it. You know, like what type of raised beds I want to use, what vessels, all that kind of stuff. Obviously I have to keep it, um, mobile because once winter hits again, I want to bring my greenhouse back to the spot, uh, so I get the most sunlight possible, but I kind of want to use this area like double duty, really fit everything in. So over here, I will, I will show you guys these later. Um, Walter's Gardens with Proven Winners, they sent me a lot of their 2023 perennials, which I am super excited about trying. And thank you so much to them. Look at this. Look at this one. What is the name of this one? Luminary Sunset Coral. Look at that color. That is my color. And there's so many buds on this. So I've got to get these out into the ground. Um, I'm just so excited about these. So I'll show you guys that in another video. Here is a uh, milkweed. I think this is showy leaf, the showy leaf milkweed. So I have bad news. We went on vacation. I planted some milkweed. I did some sneak attack milkweed planting in a native garden here in Davis. We went on vacation and there's no, there's no water to that garden. We went on vacation and we had this massive heat wave, 100 degrees, and my, my, um, milkweed all died in that garden. <laughs> so I'm trying to grow some more so that I can replant it. But my plan is, is to grow them on a little bit more than I had before so that, um, you know, if for some reason I miss a watering, I had been going over there and just been watering them with water bottles. Um, but you know, when I was on vacation, there was nothing I could do and I forgot got to tell my neighbor to do it. So that's unfortunate, but, but I'll, I'll try again. It should be no big deal. Let me set this one up. All right. So moving over here, this is my Hall's Japonica honeysuckle. It's looking beautiful. It's been in bloom. It's still kind of in bloom, but it's kind of fading out a little bit. Look at how pretty. It smells so good, you guys. So good. I'm looking at the leaves and they're all looking a little bit yellow. So I think I need to do a little bit of fertilizing on these honeysuckle this month. But in between each one, I have my limelight hydrangeas that are just doing fantastic. They are about to start blooming. I can see little buds on these and in the backyard. There's one there and there's one there. So I'm super, super excited about that. I'm thinking I might even have to move my bird feeders because the blooms might be hitting the bird feeders. That's how big they're getting. So, so excited about that. One of the things I want to work on this month is I want to find something to underplant this area. Um, the bird, the birds are of course super messy and they drop their seeds and then I get weeds all underneath here and I don't want to pull those out anymore. So I want to put in some type of ground cover so I don't have to worry so much about pulling the weeds. So I've been looking as to what would be a good ground cover. I think I have a couple of ideas. Um, so I'll be looking at that and looking at the plant stores and seeing what they have. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to kind of get that going and get that planted. And then I won't have to worry so much about weeding under there. So moving over here to this trio of pots, these are more of my annuals that I have. Right after my last garden tour, I cut back this um, Superbina sparkling amethyst hard, like super, super cut it back because it was just getting leggy and kind of, um, it was old, it was from last year. So it is obviously starting to bloom again. Very excited about that. This is one of my favorite, favorite plants in the garden. It's normally an annual, but for me, it is a perennial. Um, back here, here, look at this gorgeousness. This is Supertunia Blue Skies. So this pot actually gets a little bit more shade and I think the Supertunia Blue Skies really like it. I had Supertunia Blue Skies in full sun in my front yard a couple years ago and it kind of got this like kind of washed out look. Um, it just wasn't as pretty as this. So they are just loving this spot and I am just obsessed with this Supertunia right here. I think it looks so pretty. I can see it from inside, from inside my bedroom, from inside the living room, and I love it. Right next to that, I have um, the Supertunia Whiteout. 
um, excuse me, super, super junior senator, stupid. <laughs> I am blanking on the name right now. I think it's Whiteout. Um, I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> but too many plants to remember. And then uh, some more Super Tunia Royal Velvet right there, which is so, so pretty. But again, these blue skies, I am just drawn to that. I think it's so pretty. So this whole, whole area is kind of my purple area with my topiaries, and I really like it. I think it's beautiful. Over here, this big hole that looks ugly. Um, I just transplanted a summerific hibiscus into the front yard. I'm really happy I did that because I think it'll get some more sun. And of course, I've done nothing with this yet. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm planning it. I will get to it, but it's just, it, it, it's coming. It'll come soon. I don't want to rush these things. You know, I don't want to put things in, um, that I don't really like or anything like that. So, um, I have, I have plenty of time to get to that, I think. But here is where we're just storing our fire pit. We don't even, we don't even use it over here. That's another reason why I want to put it back over in the, the patio area or whatever patio, whatever fire pit we do end up getting, um, because I want to use it. We just don't use it over here. All right. Over here, this beautiful garden bed that I absolutely love. This one changed a little bit. You can't really notice it because all the plants are kind of still babies, but um, I redid my flower box in my front yard and I had a lot of plants, including these three uh, boxwoods, these small boxwoods that I actually got off the clearance rack from Lowe's. I put them back here. They scorched just a little bit and it was probably just the difference because it went from like full shade to almost full sun. Um, but I think that they're going to be fine. They're getting lots of water. So I did one, two, three. And then I also had some um, purple fountain grass. One, two, three. Excuse all the twigs and the sticks. I haven't cleaned that up yet. Um, but I was afraid that this one wasn't going to grow, but I think it is. I think it's going to I think it's going to do its thing. So I think that that will be really pretty as the season goes on. Purple fountain grass starts off really slow and then all of a sudden it just shoots up and starts going crazy. Um, so I think that that will be a really pretty look and kind of just fill it in. Purple fountain grass is so easy to get here. It's so cheap. <laughs> so I don't feel bad about just putting it in. And then if I change my mind and want to take it out, I'll just take it out. Plus I already had these plants. They were just transplanted. And then over here, I splurged and I ordered five of the Supertunia Sparkling Rosé, which is kind of the companion plant to the Sparkling Amethyst. And I had never seen this. I had yet to see this in the plant or the garden center. So that's why I ordered it. And I'm so glad I did. I cannot wait for it to start blooming. I think it'll be really happy here. Um, I just put this in right before we went on vacation, like two weeks ago. Um, so there's still new plants, but they will start growing. And I think it'll be a really pretty pop of pink right there. Okay. So looking back over here, I just posted a video on how I built a tutorial. I built another one. This is my first one. And this one, I obviously didn't do anywhere near <laughs> as good a job as I did my second one, but I'm still loving it. My clematis is super happy on, on it. Um, Underneath here, I have, what is the name of that plant? I will put it on the screen right now. I thought it died. <laughs> this is how, this is how all my tours are. I tell you guys that something died and then I don't get around to moving it and then all of a sudden it starts growing again. Um, so this one had white flowers. So I'm hoping that the blooms start coming. Um, and, uh, it will kind of take over as, cause the clematis is done blooming for the year. Um, so I'm hoping that that one, Mandevilla, that's what it is. The Mandevilla will, um, start kind of taking over and taking over this to tour for the rest of the season. Okay, I have my three bobo hydrangeas. They are starting to bud up, so I'm super excited to see that. And then I had, I, I obviously bought a flat of uh, Super Tunia Royal Velvet, <laughs> so I added a couple more in over here. And yeah, and I think it's gonna look really, really good. Okay, so over here are my two berry barrels. They're doing really well. Before I left on vacation, I decided I wanted to protect the blueberries from the birds. Um, so I just put these tomato cages over them and then I put some bird netting over them. And so far it seems to do pretty well. I don't have a ton of fruit yet, but I do have one little blueberry right there. Let me look on this side, see what I have going on. 
Yeah, not a ton of fruit. I just planted these this year, so we'll see what happens with the fruit. Um, but the strawberries have been going crazy. We've been totally eating off of them. Um, they're delicious, especially the seascape variety. It's absolutely amazing. Ooh, I see a good one. Okay, I'm gonna come and eat that one later. <laughs> So these berry barrels have been fantastic. I do need to um, fertilize them with soil acidifier and I will do that in the first of the month, um, after the first of the month. So uh, that's the first of the month is when I add all my amendments and I just wait until that time um, just so that I don't get myself confused. It's like, when did I do that? When did I fertilize? When did I add the amendments? I always just do it right at the first of the month. Okay, so here is my hashtag single seed challenge uh, 2022 purple rain tomato. I had this in my greenhouse and I planted it out right before I left on vacation and it has quadrupled, sextupled <laughs> in size since I put it in a bigger pot. I felt bad, you know, I didn't know that I was stunting its growth so much, but it is super happy. Uh, purple rain tomato. Um, it's going to be like this purplish big tomato. Um, this, this is a semi-determinant. I think it's a semi-determinant tomato. I have to check on that, but it is super happy. And of course I did just a basic tomato cage on this one. Okay, just a couple more things I wanted to show you guys. I want to show you guys this Nandina bed because my plans are to kind of revamp this. Maybe not revamp, but maybe just clean it up. Um, when I blow off the leaves and the bark and everything like that to try and clean up the patio, I just blow it over into this section. So it's become kind of like this forgotten space. And I really don't want to leave it as that. And of course, we have all of our pool toys right here that I have to find a better spot for. So that's another thing that I want to do this month is I want to clean up this whole bed, make it look nicer, trim up the Nandina, make those look prettier, and then find something nice to plant in between the two. I do have two uh, camellias. I have Pinkaboo camellia, and then right here I have my Happy Birthday camellia. So I want to leave those, and I want to kind of work around it, um, but it is definitely something that I want to work on this month. So here is my before, and then over here I want to show you guys my window box and how good it is doing. Oh, first I want to show you guys my raspberry. <laughs> this is a raspberry bush. I kind of neglect it. I don't really pay attention to it and it's going crazy. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't even know the name of the raspberry. Um, and then for pruning, I just cut all of the canes off just at the bottom. Um, so I really haven't been paying attention to that, but it is obviously very, very happy. And then over here is my window box right by my kitchen. Look at how beautiful it is. Sorry about the garbage cans and the shovel, <laughs> but look at how gorgeous that is. And you can totally see it from the inside, which is exactly what I was going for. I wanted to plant this so that the real view was from the inside out. And you can see that these uh, unplugged So Blue Salvia are so tall and so beautiful. And it is a gorgeous view from when I'm doing the dishes in the kitchen. All right, everyone, so that is a look at my backyard in May. A lot of fun stuff going on. I added so much to this backyard and we are totally, totally enjoying it. Still have a lot of work to do, but a gardener's job is never done. So <laughs> it's kind of gonna be like that every single month. And I like that. I like that about gardening is that I always have something fun to do and it's a constant kind of change and a rhythm and and I just love it. It's why I love gardening. So thank you all for watching this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section and I will do my best to answer them. If you want to see more videos like this and more gardening videos, please consider subscribing and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today.